Hello, hello everyone. How's everyone's weekends doing? So today we're going to be doing facts of the insidious, the red door. I watched the movie. It was actually not too bad. Um, I believe it was not as creepy though as the first couple ones. However, I'm not going to spoil any more, any more of that. It was still really good. Um, it was a little bit of an emotional one too. So yeah, go watch it if you haven't and leave in the comments below if you have of what you thought of the movie. Let's get right into the facts though. So number one is it's directed by Patrick Wilson, the one who plays the father of Dalton in the movie. Um, based on, so this is based on a story by Lee, Wannell, and Teams. Originally, it was directed by James Wan Serves, uh, but now he serves as a producer, as does Jason Blum through his Blumhouse Productions banner. Um, number four, after the release of The Insidious, The Last Key in 2018, Blumhouse opted for possibilities to produce future films in the series, including a crossover with the Sinister series, which I thought was really a good idea because they are very similar, some of them, I believe because they do cross over into a different, um, like a hellish kind of universe, right? Um, filming began in August of 2022 at the Morris County and Madison locations around New Jersey. And last, and, um, it was initially projected to gross 18 to $23 million from 3,188 theaters in its opening weekend, and it would make it had made 15.3 million on its first day, including the five million from the Thursday night previews. That's really good. Wow. And I wonder the ones who had seen it already, what you guys thought of it. I would love to hear your opinions. Please comment below. Feel free. It's an open book. So more th more of these. So uh, number seven. Dalton's sketch of the lipstick demon. So this is some spoiler alerts, just letting you guys know. During the opening credits montage of Insidious, the Red Door, a series of Dalton's sketches as an art student are shown, including one of the Insidious franchises, a recurring villain known as the lipstick demon. Which makes the sketch particularly noteworthy is that it is recreation of the lipstick demon's first proper appearance in the original Insidious in which he pops up right behind Josh. This scene was utilized heavily in the marketing for Insidious and would swiftly become one of the most, one of the movie's most memorable jump scares. The Red Door evidently recognized the significance of this moment to the success of Insidious by heart hearkening back to it early on. Number, uh, number eight is the flashback of the Bride in Black. This one actually creeped me more the most out, oh, this character here. I did not like The Bride in Black. <laughs> Another of the Insidious franchise's well-known demonic antagonist is the Parker Crane, the, aka The Bride in Black, who possesses in Josh in Insidious in Chapter 2. The Insidious franchise includes an entire backstory for The Bride in Black, and although Parker is not a major character in The Red Door, the demonic antagonist does flash on screen in a mirror cameo during the film. Aside from this, The Red Door also emphasizes The Bride in Black's significance to Josh's story in another way. Also, please stay till the end because we will draw for the next movie of facts that we're going to do. So, net number... Sorry, number number nine, flashbacks to Josh's possession in Insidious Chapter 2. So, Josh's aforementioned possession by the Bride in Black would turn him into an unwilling antagonist in Insidious Chapter 2, with the movie culminating with Josh in possessed rampage in pursuit of his terrified family. The Red Door revisits Josh's possession in Insidious Chapter 2 with Josh chasing Renee and their children into the basement of their house. Josh would ultimately be freed of Parker Crane's possession when Dalton enters the um, enters the further wait, enters the house. Josh would ultimately be freed of Parker Crane's possession when Dalton enters the further to save his father. Uh, so the Red Door revisiting this in Josh's own return to the father in the movie third. Third act shows how just how much he and his family have gone through. 
I did not like the beginning of the movie, and I won't spoil that, but just go and watch it if you haven't. This one, I was a little bit, so we'll go into number 10 here. I was a little bit kind of sad here that they weren't in this movie, but of course the the two, um, what were, who, what were they? Like, they, they were the ghost investigators that worked alongside the, the older lady there, Specs and Tucker's internet ad, so that was number 10. As Dalton and his college friend Chris Winslow begin searching for answers for the de demonic visions Dalton is experiencing, they come across a video online of Spex and Tucker. Spex and Tucker are two of the more lighthearted um, characters of Insidious the Red Door and the franchise as a whole, helping the Lambert family and others with the demonic hauntings with the ad feature featuring Spex and Tucker speaking about the further and offering their services to combat hauntings. Their Ghostbusters like expertise in the previous Insidious movies gets a well earned plug in the red door. I, I do gotta admit I didn't I was like I kinda fell asleep through some of it. So maybe they did show up or it was just the video. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. Uh, I was kind of, I didn't see them though. I just, just the video, I guess, would make sense. And then, number 11 is, in 2019, Wilson was quiet, quietly looking for another, for an opportunity to make his directorial, the directorial debut, and when franchise co-creator Lee, Lee Wannell happened to come up with an idea for the fifth Insidious filming involved the return of the Lambert family, Wilson's agent asked Blumhouse if Wilson could direct and star. One thing led to another, and Wilson found himself brainstorming for the first for the first directorial effort in his backyard with screenwriter Scott Teams. But then the global pandemic derailed the entire world and entertainment industry alike. So Wilson uh, kept busy as an actor until Insidious Five got back on track. Number twelve. Oh, and then there was more for number 10. However, the further the further wasn't far from his mind as Wilson daydreamed about his future directorial debut while filming the Roland Emmerich's Moonfall of 2022 and Insidious co-creator James Wan's Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom due out December 16th. Number 12. There hasn't been a day in the past four years that I haven't thought about this movie. That's the honest to God truth. Every day on the set of these movies, including Aquaman 2, I was reworking things and rewriting things, Wilson tells The Hollywood Reporter. Um, number 13. The Red Door reconvenes with Lambert's a decade after Insidious Chapter 2, and because of their hypnotism at the end of the latter film, Josh and his now 18-year-old son Dalton still have no recollection of their astral projections to the further and subsequent duels with the lipstick demon. Their father and son relationship has been has also become strained as a result of Josh and Renee's divorce, as well as oh sorry I said that at the beginning that's not what I meant to say at um but yeah I was sad that they were divorced in this movie as well as their missing backstory. So in an attempt to mend fences, Josh drives Dalton to his East Coast art school while their past demons begin to resurface. Wilson has a whole... So this is number 13. Wilson has a whole new application for his former directors, considering that he now understands just how much compromise comes with the territory of being a filmmaker. In fact, Wilson had to go to bat for an early shot in his film because he did not want to do anything that might overly resemble or repeat the franchise's greatest scares. Um, number 14. Oh, sorry. Got distracted there. Number 14. Hi guys, I just wanted to quickly come on here and say sorry I messed up some of the numbers of going through the facts, but I also meant to say instead of application on this last bit, a fun fact, it was supposed to be appreciation, not application. Sorry about that guys, enjoy. You're never going to repeat Joe Basharki's lipstick demon behind Wilson. It's never going to happen again, so you want to say everyone about above you get over that that kind of jump scare is not going to happen i'm not going to do that it can happen it can't happen twice so that's what i believe um wilson had said because they didn't want any repeats which makes sense and lastly it, yes it ha it has and it's awesome that you remembered that it was exactly four years uh no that's not what i wanted to read sorry um so 
last one will go here. It was literally my agent. So this was in an interview. Um, when he asked James about how your directorial debut came to be, he made it sound as simple as you make a phone call and asking, was it actually a little more complicated than that? So this is what he had said. It was literally my agent asking. It got pitched to me. They came out to me with an idea for a story before they wrote a story about the Lamberts. They wanted to know if the Lamberts would do it because I had left the, this franchise behind. There was no ill ill will it was fine it had just run its course so they wanted to they wanted this movie to be about dalton about but it was actually my agent who said what if patrick directs it my agent and i had been looking for things to direct and at this point blumhouse didn't know that what that i even wanted to direct or that i had a desire so when my agent asked what if patrick directs it Blumhouse went, of course, yes, that's a great idea. We didn't know what he wanted to do, and it, so, it was, so it really was that easy. Once I thought about the movie that I wanted to make, it was very personal, so I didn't feel like I had to pitch it myself. My agent asked, they said yes, and then I went to LA to meet uh, with Cooper Samuelson. I also talked to Steve Bursch to at Sony on the phone and just said if you don't want to make this kind of movie that's fine but if I'm going to do this movie I'm going to go back and deal with what happened at the end of the insidious chapter two that's the movie I want to make I want to deal with this family's trauma through the eyes of a horror movie that's the story I'd like to tell with a father-son relationship and said and they said great go for it so it really was that much of a blessing that's awesome that they decided to make him the director of it I thought this was a good movie overall um it was cute it was good it, of course horror um but it was a little scary but it wasn't as scary as the other ones were like the original og jump scares those ones were creepy i did not like the, that woman smiling when he walks through the door in the first one uh and he, she's like this and it's super creepy i did not like that i think that one will forever haunt me anyways let's get into what movie we are going to do next and comment below if you've seen the movie or what other movies you'd like me to do. So let's get right into it. The Meg to the Trench. So I will get right on get right on to that one next. Super excited. So now it's so the Insidious movie is out now. Go watch it. See you guys later. Have a great rest of your day.